So um, I wanted to start by thanking you all for being here and thanking especially our elected officials that are in the room. And I'm going to do a quick rundown of all those folks. Um, we have from Assembly Member Robert Rivas's office, we have uh, Dominic Dursa. We have, yes, thank you. Uh, we have Mary Adams from uh, County Board of Supervisors. <laughs> Bruce McPherson from the County of Santa Cruz, supervisor there. And then we have a wonderful group of folks that are either mayors or council members from our various cities across the region. We have, um, from City of Gonzales, we have uh, council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Scott Funk and the Mayor uh, Maria Orzoco. From the City of Marina, we have Lisa Berkeley, who council member, and we also have Bruce Delgado, who's the mayor there. Uh, and we have Gail Morton, who's council person there in um, Marina. Um, let's see, we have a couple more Marina folks. We have the Mayor Pro Tem, Frank O'Connell, and uh, Council Member Adam uh, Ur Urutia. I hope I said that right, sorry, okay. <laughs> um, and then from Pacific Grove, we're really happy to have Jennifer McAdams here. They're one of our newest members. Thank you, Jennifer, for joining and um, supporting us. Um, we have the Mayor Cesar Flores from the city of San Juan Batista, and Council Member John Freeman. And then from Santa Cruz, we have Donna Myers, and, um, who is uh, the council person there. And we have the mayor of Scotts Valley, Jack Dills, and also council member Derek Tim. And last but certainly not least, we have the mayor of Seaside, Ian Oglesby. And we have council member Anna Velasquez from City of Soledad. How about a nice round of applause for all of our electors? So, and I just wanted to give a quick shout out also to another really great group of folks that are here, and that is our youth participants. For those of you that may recall, we always offer uh, this time 30 pro bono tickets to students from all over the region that are here now. We have CSUMB crowd, I think, there. Went stand and be recognized for all the good stuff. All of them could stand. We have. Other students from, uh, I believe, from UC Santa Cruz, Cabrillo, anyway, lots of, uh, of representation from the various schools from across the region. So thank you for coming. And if you have a chance to talk to them while you're here, that's, that's kind of the point. We want to have them be engaged in the conversations and learn about all the cool things that are happening in our region. So thanks for coming. OK, so uh, we're going to move on to the uh, thanking of our sponsors. Really excited for the first time to have a diamond sponsor, and that is Montage Health. Thank you so much to Steve Packer and Dan Limesand for your support. If you noticed, um, we went to Lanyards this time, which is a change for us. And the reason that is is because we've decided at MBEP we're going to do everything we can to not have any plastic, especially single-use plastic. Yay. So the name badges that you typically get have that plastic holder. So what we did is we went to this paper that you have the little clip on. And then we uh, gave us an opportunity to also give some love to a sponsor that might want to step up and help us do that. So thank you again to the Montage peeps. Where are you here somewhere? There, right there. Thank you for stepping up and being our first ever diamond sponsor. Really appreciate that. We do have platinum sponsors, the Al family. Thank you so much, George Al and, and all the great people. I know they're somewhere over here. Yes, right there. William and the whole gang. Um, Central Coast Marketing Team, Southwell Ventures, and San Benito Health Foundation. Uh, our gold sponsors, a whole bunch of them, including Dignity Health, City of Salinas, uh, Cal State Monterey Bay, Kaiser Permanente, the City of Gonzales, Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare, UCSC, Driscoll's, and PAMP. So thank you all. We can't do these events without your sponsorship. Thank you. And uh, our silver sponsors, Stanford Children's Hospital, Man Packing, uh, which is now part of Del Monte, Bay Federal Credit Union, and Santa Cruz County Bank. Woo, there we go, we got that. We know where you guys are. And thanks to Sarah for being our media sponsor for um, Santa Cruz Tech Beat. Yay! Um, I wanted to thank, of course, our board for their uh, ongoing support. Such a great, for me, as running this organization, to have the support of these fabulous group of folks. I just wanted to make a brief announcement that we had a, a change in uh, uh, our board chair situation, which is um, the normal course of things where we have board uh, officers change. This is now our beginning of our fourth year. So now I just wanted to give a special shout out to Eduardo Ochoa, who's our board chair. 
uh, that's president of CSUMB. <clears throat> there he is. And to Matt Huffaker, who is the city manager in Watsonville, he is our vice chair incoming. So thank you, Matt. So we have uh, a lot of rep good representation from the board here in the room. And I just ask all, all of you if you would all stand and be acknowledged and thank you for your service. There we go. And of course, we couldn't do any of the work we do without our members. So thank you all, those of you in the audience that are members. This is what supports the work. This is how you enable us to do what we do and all the initiatives that we work on and uh, are able to uh, hire the staff that we, we are able to. So um, members are um, great. We love you. If you're not a member, please talk to me. We'd love to have you be a member. I want to give a shout out. Just this week, we had two new members join. that Santa Cruz Works which is now, just as of yesterday, they made the announcement that they are merging with uh, Santa Cruz New Tech Meetup. And those of you that know Doug Erickson is now the head of Santa Cruz Works in this merged organization, and we have agreed to be strategic partners with them. So lots of good things still to come in, with that relationship being brand new. And um, the second one was CMTC that just joined, and I just want to give a quick shout out to Christina Chavez-Wyatt, who uh, some of you may know from her role in San Benito County. She is part of this uh, manufacturing group that helps small manufacturers be successful and offer services and funding for them. So we're really uh, excited about the alignment with the work they do to have them now be a member. So round of applause for all our great members. I just wanted to put a plug in, save the date, put it in your calendar now, all day on October 25th. We'll be back in Monterey, but at the Hyatt this time, and we are going to have another great event for you at our State of the Region. So for those of you that haven't been to that full day event, it's really an action-packed day, as we have a half day today, but it's going to be another great, great one, so hopefully you all will all see you there too. So now I'm going to just take a few minutes to set the context of what we're going to talk about today. We have some wonderful uh, content that's going to follow me. And I just thought it might help to, A, give us a little bit of context on the economics that's happening in the region, and B, to give you something to kind of noodle on while you are listening to our, our uh, panelists and our, our keynote. So quickly, an economic snapshot of the region. As we know, data is data, right? We can interpret it one way or the other. That's the human factor in how we inter decide to interpret data. What I'm going to share with you now is some good things, right? These are all really positive things that are happening in our region. Unemployment is down, which is a good thing. We like to have uh, uh, lots of people employed. Job growth continues to be strong. This is good. This stuff is, by the way, is all on our website. Household income is on the rise. This is uh, all very positive. But what we need to kind of keep in mind while we're looking at all the good is what is happening that maybe is not so good. So I'm going to share with you a few things just, again, to kind of think about. More families are below the poverty line. That is not a good trend. More households are receiving food stamps. The income disparity is growing. So the haves are getting wealthier and the have-nots are, are not. So we're having this increase. And you can see across how we, how we fit in versus California and how we break down by county. Of course, this is a trending. All these are comparing the, the data from 2010 to 2017. The cost of living is outpacing household income. And we all know what's the one word that is causing that? Housing. housing, right. So that's not good because uh, buying a home is out of reach for most. This is, you know, this is not news, right? We all know what the housing crisis is doing to our families. By the way, I checked the US average. Anyone want to take a guess? Home ownership? 60, six, zero. Yeah, ours is 11. Rents are increasing. We see that across the board. And the renting, the people that are renting are they're spending too much of their income on housing. This is not a good thing. And of course, as we all know, the RENA numbers and the housing production is not keeping pace. This is the update um, on the data. And again, this is all on our website that we are way behind in production of housing. So where does that leave us? What I want to do today, I'm going to steal liberally from um, SPUR, which is a nonprofit based in the Bay Area. And what they do is some scenario planning on what, what the future would look like. 
So we're going to look out 50 years out and see what, what is possible. This is your basic quadrant drawing, right? Up to the right is good. Down on the, on the left is bad. So what we want to have is a booming economy and having everyone be able to benefit from that economy. High equity and high economic growth. So what's, what Spur did is they created these fantastic drawings. The illustrator is Michael Byers, and this all is really interesting stuff, and I'm gonna just barely touch on it now, but feel free to enjoy all this data that's on their website, on the Spur website, and I hope to get Alicia, their CEO, at a future event, because they're really doing some innovative think tank sort of stuff. So one scenario is the gated utopia, right? So that, that means the haves are doing really well, we have economic prosperity, but what we have is social exclusion, right? So we've, we've not done well by making the floating tide rise all boats. Uh, the Bay Area bunker is, is even bleaker. Bay Area bunker is, bunker is when we have economic decline combined with social exclusion. The Rust Belt West, yeah, we don't want that either. Go to Detroit and get a job, right? That's what that sign says. Economic decline and social inclusion. We tried to make it more equitable, but we didn't have the economic engine to support that activity. That's a problem. This is, you know, this is the up and to the right. This is when we've got it right. We have got high equity, good social inclusion, and we have economic prosperity to support that. So this is, this is what we would like to have. This is of the four scenarios, this is the most desirable. But in order to get there, we have choices we have to make, hard choices about where we're gonna build housing, about how we're gonna get people moving around the region, about reforming systems that we are just used to and have lived with for so long that we sort of take it for granted. So what choices will we make? I would argue that the outcomes are not inevitable, that the people that are in this room can work together and think about how what you do every day can influence the outcomes that we have in our future and which direction we will take. We're gonna hear from Bruce Katz today. He's gonna to share some fascinating things about what some possibilities might be. And our CEO panel is also gonna give us some food for thought and some insights. So I encourage you to make connections here today. Think about what a future is that we can create today that will impact our future and keep those conversations going as you leave the room today. We have uh, social media, hashtags. We can you can reach out to staff. If there's someone in the room that you wanna meet that you don't, haven't yet met yet, we can be very happy to connect you. I want us all to think about what role we can play in this. So, that's, that's the end of my spiel. <laughs>